Well, well, well. Look who we have here. Welcome, everyone. Here's to hoping that this adventure will be as fulfilling for you all as all your previous ones have been. So, without any further delay, let's get started with this exciting journey. Now, I am sure you can recall the overall dynamics of respiration from your previous knowledge of bioenergetics. Today, however, we are going to explain the process of respiration and learn all the different mechanisms involved. This simple act that we perform all the time, that is of taking in oxygen and giving out carbon dioxide in exchange is known as gaseous exchange. However, the process of inhaling the air in and expelling it out from the lungs is known as breathing. While breathing, we retain important components in our bodies, like oxygen, and release carbon dioxide. Now, we are going to discuss all this later on. But first, let's take a step back and recall a super important concept here. So, what's that one thing you need when you head out shopping? It's of course, money. But let's be specific here. You won't need just any money. The currency needs to be country appropriate too, right? I mean, you can't expect to be at a shopping mall in America with Pakistani rupees in your wallet now, can you? Speaking of currencies, we as living organisms have to perform a kind of transaction to get energy. Yes, you heard that right. In living beings, energy basically exists as a kind of special currency. And I'm sure you can recall from your previous lessons what that is. It's ATP, adenosine triphosphate. ATP is our sole energy currency. Our cells spend it, and in return, we get to run our day-to-day -day chores. So all of that studying, walking, and talking that you do, you do it because of all the ATP that you've got. Doesn't that sound amazing to you? But now, are you wondering where exactly do we get these energy packets called ATP from? Well, our bodies generate ATP as an energy from the food we eat. So basically, when we ingest any food, they contain carbon and hydrogen bonds. Upon these bonds, certain special reactions like oxidation and reduction take place, which results in a release of energy. But this energy needs to be stored as something, right? That is why it is transferred and trapped into these cute little molecules that we call ATP. Now, this whole process of ATP formation has a special name. Yes, it's cellular respiration. Now, you might be able to recall that cellular respiration is, of course, a very vital process within living organisms. So, it demands some particular ingredients as well. Out of all these ingredients, we will be giving our undivided attention to one specific ingredient that we obtain from our environment. Any one of you who can think what that ingredient is? Yes, it's the oxygen. Can you imagine your life without it? Nope, not at all. This valuable gas helps drive cellular respiration. And once that has happened, this process generates a certain byproduct, another rather famous gas called carbon dioxide or CO2. Our bodies release carbon dioxide back into the environment. Oh, and this brings me to another really important concept here. Have you ever cooked food on the stove? Well, so while cooking, we use a pot, a spatula, and of course, heat. While the heat denatures the food, the spatula mixes things together for us, right? So do you see how the heat and spatula are both helping us prepare food? But they have a uniqueness to their actions. The heat is a biochemical process. 
while mixing is a physical process. Similarly, when speaking of cellular respiration and breathing, these both processes are interlinked, but are not the same. Respiration or cellular respiration involves some mechanical and biochemical processes like breaking down a food, creating ATP, and so on. Whereas breathing is simply just a mechanical, or you can say a physical process allowing gas exchange. Now that we are clear on these terminologies, we will be discussing gases exchange in living things, both plants and animals. Let's start off with plants in the next video.